All right, KISS Army, welcome to the KISS FAQ Podcast. Thank you for giving us your time today and letting us into your head. I hope we don't do any damage. This is a KISS-related podcast by the board for the board. We hope that you enjoy. We'd love you to support this show. Please like, follow, and subscribe to us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Your likes and subscription helps us to grow and attract interviews and content. So please retweet and share our posts. Your contributions are appreciated. Welcome to episode 474 of the KISS FAQ podcast. I'm your very, very tired host, Julian Gill, admin on the FAQ message board. I was up late last night fighting with I. That's oh, how I yeah. feel this morning. Now, uh, part of my job is dealing with challenging technology, so it is what it is. Mm. Um, I'm just really tired. I can't stay up late anymore. And it was only midnight. Wait. Oh, call recorder warning. This Mac is not fast enough. Fuck you. I've been do- using this I'm piece recording. Of shit. Yeah, thank God. All right. So, um, <laughs> what news? These guys did a show without me last week. I haven't had a chance to check it out. Uh, with Daniel, of, of course, as well. So, do check that out if you haven't had the chance. What news? Well, here's something. For me, it's cool because it means I'm getting close. And it's latest proof of right. mass hysteria yes. my little spreadsheet tells me i'm 98 percent kind of there mm. and i'm actually proofing awesome. now before it goes out for copy editing uh there's some copies that you might have seen a couple of australians showing copies um and other folks have it for you know tell me your thoughts on it still need the help for france and germany french fans some newspaper Articles, see you play, you know. Um, yeah, get and, up your derrieres and go look. Yeah, and a, a lot of uh, the, the German cities I don't have local press for, which would be really cool to translate um, and add in, you know, good quality scans of newspaper articles from that. So if you're sitting on it or sitting on ticket stubs from Germany or France, um, have some good, um, you know, newspaper scans. Well, it would be very much appreciated so that I can, you know, make sure that this is as good as it can be. And, you know, initial feedback is pretty positive. So we shall see. Mark, what you got? Okay, so just really quickly, uh, I'm not sure how many people who watch this fine podcast watch my uh, YouTube updates that I make for my Project Gemini, but the CDs have come in for the Project Gemini latest record, What Lies Beyond. Uh, There is the CD. It turned out really good. Uh, There's the... Is that a trifold? Yes, it's a trifold. Nice. Turned out really nice. The booklet turned out good. Uh, As promised... You get a bonus sticker as well. Uh, make, sure you say, make sure you say that right. Bonus sticker, bonus not boner sticker. sticker. <laughs> no, no boner sticker. It's bonus sticker Bonafide available sticker. for you. But there's one thing that I want to make people aware of, and I made it aware in the video that I made as well. As beautiful as the booklet turned out, for the first time ever, Train Records made a major boo-boo and put what's supposed to be on page six on page three. So the booklet is kind of out of sequence with the lyrics, okay? Uh, I, of course, blew a, blew a gasket and called them and said, what the fuck, you know, I have a hundred, now I have all these CDs that, you know, are going to be pretty much, you know, uh-huh. not useless, but they, they're, they like, not They're not, they're not done. perfect. Yes, yeah, not perfect to my standards. So they went, they, the guy actually came over, the guy who runs Train, he came to my house and had me... <laughs> Take take it take it over like he t- opened we opened it up we went through it all, page by page and he's reprinting all the booklets for free for me, and cool. I will be sending to everybody the CD as it is right now so they don't have to wait anymore for it. But you will receive also in the mail a simple little envelope afterwards with the properly done booklet sent to you, free of charge. Okay, just so you guys know. I wouldn't stand for it. Then you would get a booklet that was out of sequence. So there's going to be one coming in the mail afterwards for you guys uh, with the proper sequence. I don't know. If that, goes, that goes in an envelope. It might get folded and bent. USPS, you know, thrashes the living daylights out with its mechanical sorting. Have you thought about well, giving... Cardboard. Well, well, then you got a ton of shipping costs. You thought about putting it out for a vote of, uh, you know, wait for them? How long is it going to take? You know? Mm. Listen, I... Uh, for me, the, the money is not the object because for me, I want 
I want people to be happy. I want people to get it. A lot of people have already told me, just send it to me anyways. It's going to be, you know, it's a misprint. Misprints are worth more later on, you know. So the, some people right. don't even care that that's, you know, like that. Which, that's that's total collector, you know, thinking right there. You know, it's a misprint. Yeah. So, uh, but some people told me to hold on to it and wait till it comes and send me the CD then. Some people have said, okay, fine, go ahead and do that. Other people, you know, it doesn't, like, nobody's giving me a negative response to it. So uh, I'm just going to do that. It's not going to be, I don't think it's going to be a big deal uh, sending it separately afterwards for the people who don't mind. And if the people want me to hold on to it and send it after, then I'll do that as well. So just but contact me and let me know either way. Yeah, I'll wait for mine. Um, yeah, because you know the moment you ship, Canada Post is going to yank their rates up the day after as well. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get into some of the news from this week. Kiss is back on tour, of course, in Europe. They're playing Hellfest in yeah. France tonight, uh, or they will have already done already it. Already did. Yeah, it's, exactly. it's done, it's over. Um you know, Jeans had a show without his shin guards, which was kind of freaky to look at when he's just there in his big shoes. It's like he's got it's diapers like I... on, diapers on his feet. You've got one yeah. of those demon shells, don't you, Ken? I do have a demon shell, yeah, a half of a demon shell. Half, but yes, uh, yeah. I mean, it's funny looking at him. I mean, it, the whole top of the outfit's so wide and big, and then the, the legs, like you know. It's like a, he's a triangle out there on stage. Yeah, yeah, that it's not actually a boot either. We'll put some people, you know, you you see him from a distance most of the time, and you think back to those boots that he wore in the seventies. Mm -hmm. um, you know, kind of kind of cool. Like at, you know, at this point, any time the band different. looks slightly different, whether it's Ace Frehley wearing a T-shirt, didn't he do that in St. Lou in two thousand? Yes, he did. Yeah, two thousand, yeah. sir. When, when it was hotter than hell on the road. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we get our kicks where we can at this at this time. They the look other like thing, clogs. Yeah, it looks right. yeah demon clogs. I guess that could yeah. be the next uh, demon crocs. True. So uh, yeah, Gene, Gene's also about ready to get his Gene Simmons auctions website going. If you go on Facebook, I think we have a thread on the FAQ. You can sign up for notifications about that when it does get going. It looks like it's going to be expensive. So if it's too expensive mm -hmm. for you, I'm going to be getting going with uh, Kiss FAQs, live auctions. Um, it's time for me to thin out some of my stuff. Um, <laughs> and I'm, I was going to do it on KLA, but I just haven't had a time to try and get into that uh, into that schedule. It seems that a lot of the same folks do the same kind of time windows, and none of it really works out for me. So um, I'm going to try the first one on my own. I've got another camera arriving, so you have one of me on screen and then the other of the item where we can uh, show it off in, in good quality and all that. Yeah. Obviously, my, my shit's going to be documents, uh, probably mm -hmm. CDs, vinyl, 45s, cassettes, uh, cool. posts, probably some posters, newspapers, magazines, shitloads of magazines, not collector magazines in most cases, reader copies, things that you might want to, you know, cut apart and just take out the kiss shit or well, the other like bands. magazines. Stuff. No, like Hit Parade. Not, like, not like Playboy or anything. No, Hit, Hit Parade, Cream, Kerrangs, like, got, got hundreds of Kerrangs. Pulse Star or something, right? Uh, pole stars are useless, you know, fucking garbage. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> then never mind. All right, yeah, I'll, I'll have a grand funk ad out of a, a pole star from recent years. Yeah, I'll be lucky to get a buck for that. Yeah, yeah, go ahead and fold it and put it in an envelope for a buck. So, yeah, that'll be coming soon. I hope to probably do one maybe next week if possible, all down to my schedule. And then, uh, I'll let you know if the other guys want to do one. And uh, someone can come keep track while they show off their stuff, since I'm sure not everyone will have two cameras. So we'll see how it goes. Um, I've got to put my kind of guideline, my rules together, you know, that you're going to pay postage. I'm not going to bullshit on customs or any of that, um, you know, and ask any questions up front. You know, all sales are final, et cetera, et cetera. But I'll try and put it no together so it's it's refunds. not... Well, so it's not like the freaking terms of service on the FAQ. Otherwise, people would be like, my response to IBM last night was, be Julian, yeah. too many rules, too complex. All right, let's get into today's topics. Um, 
30th anniversary of Kiss Confidential. Let's just hit that one quickly. Looking back at that wonderful video, uh, it would have come early on in Milani's fandom uh, mm -hmm. with missing that tour. You know, when you look back at that video package and also Extreme Close Up for that matter, you know, but Kiss Confidential, what's the first thing you think of when I say 30th anniversary of that? Then everybody got lost. Well, you, you didn't. You didn't like say to anybody as specific. I, I did. I did. Lonnie. I did. Lonnie. Oh, oh, yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. I, thought it was I didn't know. I didn't. I didn't know he was addressing me specifically. <laughs> no, right. when, when you, I think you, about you, I, you, you there, that guy, that yeah. guy, <laughs> the guy wearing the baseball cap. I don't feel so young anymore <laughs> when it's the 30th anniversary of that. I mean, that 93, 30 years ago. It's crazy to think about. I mean, um. But, and I, you know, I guess, you know, I've come a long way. We've all come a long way since then with my fandom. I mean, I remember watching that and I'd never seen him. I hadn't seen him to that mm. at that point in my life. And it was the, the video companion of, of a live three that we, we had discussed a few weeks ago um, of, the, of the show that I missed. And I, it was me getting able to see that show basically live. Um, for the first time watching it, I remember I watched it back in the summer of '93 when I got it. Um, it, it it's good, and I think it I think it it's not as tongue in cheek as, as a lot of the other as, as the other Kiss videos before. I think it's more real, um, it, especially the, you know the, the stuff in between in between in between the songs, um, and like on the on the tour bus and things like that. I think it, it's just more real and down the earth. Is it scripted? Sure, some of it's scripted, but not not nearly to the part of, of the other stuff was like just stuff like Eric talking to that. And you can just see like they're just being a little more just who they are. And I, I thought it was more I thought it was a, oh, done a whole lot better than previous videos. But 30 years ago that that came out is it, it's crazy to think about. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Fucking hell. 30 years ago that came out. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it stands the test of time pretty well. It's entertaining. I still don't like it being broken up, you know, not just being a, a, a full watch through, but I guess you can now get that from Kissology if you wish. Um, you know, there are some other good shows out there. I mean, back then, it was like you just waited for each video release. You'd had Exposed, you'd had Phantom come out, you had Extreme Close Up, you'd had the little EP for um, the Crazy Nights video. So it, there was like a continuous assessment assembly line of video product, you know, to supplement the stuff that we were seeing on MTV. So, you know, that was really kind of, you know, the last in line for a while because MTV Unplugged comes after that. And, you know, that's a, a good three year wait until that that took, you know, that came out. So this, this was the great one. It was, you know, like Lonnie, I didn't get to see that band on that tour. Um, my way of seeing them and it was released in the uk as well so that that really helped things out for me mark yeah i mean i i really enjoyed it i mean that time period i really was back into kiss pretty heavy like i said i, I thought the album revenge was really good i was happy when that came out and uh you, you know back then um you know i wasn't so into the little you know details of the tours and stuff like that like how well was it doing and stuff like that so you know I, I was kind of unaware that touring wise it wasn't doing that hot right but you know when these videos come out you would never know because i mean when they when they present this kind of a video and you see it and, and it's all packed house when they're you know showing this concert it's like oh the, you know the tour did great you know and the one thing that kiss has to be thankful for i think is that while maybe the album and maybe the tour itself doesn't normally do that well didn't do well at that period their their releases like these vhs releases when they came out they always seem to do really good i remember looking at a riaa awarding and a lot of these awards were given for these releases you know like platinum selling this and gold selling that you know of, of these video releases and you know i think that's one thing that kept them kind of you know maybe in the okay books with the people at mercury at that time because you know if the album tanks but the video does pretty good then it's a not so bad a thing after all right don't know about that gold's only fifty thousand copies and what okay, were these but... what were the the price point on these at the time 29.99 i think 
you know, something like that. So, you know, again, it's still money in the bank, but, uh, you know, I, I don't think they were massive money makers. Don't yeah, but know. not everybody was making, but not everybody was doing that with their video releases, you know? What, going gold like or? Doing that, like going that well, like as far as sales. Yeah, that's true. Ken? Yeah, the this video, uh, probably my least favorite of all those videos that they released back then. Um, but Hater. yeah, I didn't, I didn't like, <laughs> I didn't like it broken up in the middle either um, or you know I would, would have rather had the choice to watch the full concert you know all the way through and that sort of thing um, and even even the video the way and I, I talked about this I think a few weeks ago we were talking about Live 3 is about the I didn't like the the, the, the shot the look of the video uh, live I just didn't like the graininess um, that they did on it um, but the rest of it, I haven't said that. The rest of it's okay. The, you know, it's it is more, you know, um, lighthearted. But it, it's not uh, scripted like Lonnie was saying so much and that sort of thing. Uh, some of it uh, hasn't aged well for me, uh, but because I like the other two videos that came before it a lot more. And I think uh, then you yeah, had kiss my ass a year later actually oh yeah i forgot about that and that's uh, how bad it is yeah yeah it wasn't the greatest one the best part of that is about just the old you know the bootleg the old videos stuff. yeah that's the only part to really go to on that uh, and that's what a lot of the kiss fans want to you know look at anyway so yeah it's it's all right i mean 30 years it's pretty amazing um I don't know how it sold compared to some of the other ones. Probably not as well as those first two, um, but uh, it, it's still worth having, for sure. Yeah, it's funny that I bag on "Kiss My Ass," but I love "Kiss Extreme Close Up." Uh, not, uh, I mean, exposed. You know, exposed. With its, with, yeah, with its yeah, cheesy right. story, um, you know, and yeah. because it was the first real taste of a, a video release by by Kiss when they redid yeah. kind of the concept, you know, uh, j just more poorly for Kiss My Ass and mixed in some of the co the covers stuff, you know, it didn't work for me. All right, let's get into some topics from the board. It, it's been a colorful week on the FAQ. I've been a very angry man uh, at some of these <laughs> topics, so let's go into the one that. That triggered me Lonnie in 2023 does kiss suck I voted no thank you kiss does not suck in 2023 and when I voted I was disappointed that I was in the minority on the poll um, <laughs> no they don't suck in 2023 they're still touring you still we we, we all not we all, but a lot of us are going to get the opportunity to see them one final time. And I'm excited to see them one final time. I, I, I had said multiple times on here that I, that I thought I was done, that, that I, I thought I'd seen my last show. And lo and behold, I'm going to get the opportunity again. And, and I'm excited for it. I mean, it's, it's 2023. And I saw them on the farewell tour in 2000. And I'm still get I'm still getting to see them, still getting to enjoy them, you know, still gonna build build memories and you know, and it, it and it really does feel final this time. And we we've talked about on the show that that you know that they will how many times did you think you saw them for the last time that it, but it really does feel like well this really is it. Um but does Kiss suck in 2023? No, I, I I think it's great. We get that they're still going, in um, that they are they are going out on their own terms. I mean, poor Ozzy didn't Ozzy didn't get to do it. Ozzy's been kind of forced into retirement, and Kiss is going out with one triumphant bang. Does Paul Stanley sound like he did in '92? No, no, we get we know that, but they don't suck in 2023. Hallelujah. Testify. <laughs> Round of applause. Yeah, I, I just can't believe that people who are hanging out on a KISS message board, a, a fanatics 
depth of a band I could actually come up with a topic like that I'm like look at you guys did you say that to your grandparents if you still have them that you're not as quick as you used to be you suck <laughs> <laughs> or your parents or some loved one you know turn around to your significant other you know 30 years later you know what you really suck uh, you know dad you're not in as good a shape as you were 30 years ago you kind of suck yeah <laughs> Hell, I I totally do. I, I suck, you know, compared to anything. But it, it was just depressing to see that because have they overstayed their welcome at the party? Yes. But do you know you've overstayed your welcome at a party always? No, it's sometimes when they're sweeping up around your head and you're still drooling that uh, you realize, oh, party's over. I guess I should have left about two hours ago. Um yeah, you know, it, it's, it's so easy to project. It's so easy to criticize. And I think Nani nails it for me, that they're going out on their own terms. Yeah, they're putting out these kind of rhetorical statements about, you know, the end of the road and everyone kind of rolls their eyes. But you know what, 2023, I, I saw... On my Facebook, a lot of pictures of people seeing the band over the last 10 days, whether it's in Newcastle, Birmingham, mm -hmm. um, you know, Belgium, uh, it, <clears throat> smiling, happy faces of people just like us four right now with their friends enjoying kiss some with their you know one taking one group of friends to the show the next night taking family so does kiss suck hell no they're still bringing fans and people together across borders across political and religious and all sorts of other divisive beliefs together uh, an electric altar to you know celebrate the songs that have been a part of someone's soundtrack that can never suck no matter how atrocious, you know, bits of it may get technically. Mark, does Kiss suck? <laughs> you know, it, I knew you were going to go to me. And the funny thing is, uh, you you did this whole soliloquy about, you know, why they shouldn't, why people shouldn't say that they suck and this and that. Oh. And of course, and I well, set you up, don't I? So now, of course, the, the, you know, you know where I was going to go with it, which was, you know, I checked the the thing just right now where it's saying that seven, sixty percent say yes they suck, forty percent say they su no they don't suck. That's officially right now. I just checked the poll. I wonder if okay. I could see who voted that they do suck and whether I can suspend them all for two weeks. <laughs> wow. yes. But but the thing is, look. I love Kiss, okay? I wouldn't be on here doing this if I didn't, okay? But there's a part of me that was just like, you know, I was holding my hand like, don't push no, or, you know, or don't push yes, you know? Like, uh, because I, I, I love the band, but there's a part of me that keeps thinking that, you know, are they really trying as hard as they could? I mean, I look at a band like Metallica, okay, right now touring, their their tour that they're doing now i mean i don't know if you guys have seen any footage of this stuff but you talk about a band that's like innovating the whole thing of touring okay that that sound system is like unbelievable that they have set up there the video system that they have set up for this is unbelievable for this i mean kiss used to be that band that's saying no, the big boys watch how the big boys do it and really they're they're not even in the league with metallica anymore at all when it comes to live performances now so on one hand, while I love Kiss and I'm sure it's still an entertaining show and stuff like that, there's a part of me that thinks that maybe they do suck a bit because why don't they try to go and innovate their live show a bit better? They've done the same show now for God knows how long, you know? I mean, I look at bands like Metallica and say, wow, congratulations, this is, here's a band that changes up set lists. And don't tell me that it's difficult to do. They're doing it with a gigantic stage show like this and doing it, okay? So come on, man. Uh, it's I, I I do love Kiss. I would never put that they do suck. I didn't vote that they sucked. I said no. But you know, there there is a part of me that, that that's a bit disappointed because even when Rush went out in their last tour, not knowing that that was their, their last tour, look at the show that they did. It was absolutely fantastic. They did a show where it was like totally modern and they cut it all back down to like a just a simple two amp setup like they did in the start of their career when they were playing gymnasiums and that was a great concept that they gymnasiums. did you know 
Yeah, you know what I mean. Good word. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 that that's the thing. I mean, they put some thought into it. I mean, sure, the 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 stage set that they're using now in the farewell tour was new and different when it started. But I mean, it's already kind of dry now. I mean, they could have changed it up. Yeah, they're being environmentally friendly. They've scaled back the pyro and the pods, you know, so they're being very <laughs> eco-conscious, you know, they're getting everyone home before it's too late. and not Reducing their carbon footprint. footprint. Yeah, they, they are, you know, so so Mark, I, really? All right, Ken, oh. g- give us the word. All right, so when I saw this, I did answer on there, I said, if, if you answered yes, then why are you here? <laughs> True. I, I mean, if you actually believe that, what are you even doing on a KISS, you know, FAQ uh, board or whatever? Um, I, I don't know. I, I, I just don't get it. But anyway, they don't suck. The only way KISS sucks is they suck my money every year <laughs> in 2023 and every other year before it. Um uh, the other thing is, the, the the stage show is actually pretty. I mean, okay, maybe it's not Metallica's latest and greatest or whatever, but the stage show is a vast improvement uh, on the end of the road over the prior fifteen years mm-hmm. before that, uh, because that was redundant and lackluster staging for all that time uh, until they went on the end of the road and you know. The, yeah, you say, oh, well, it's just a pod, you know, or whatever. But no, it's it's a lot better. It's a lot more firepower going on stage and fire and lasers and the you know everything going on, and it's it's really good. So and I enjoyed it. I saw it three times on the end of the road, so that is really good. So, but I'm with you, like at the uh, like Julian said, you know, um, we got to see them or Lonnie um, see them several times. Um, and you can still, you know, bring family together and all that kind of stuff and meet the other fans. And it's just, it's kind of a big party when you go see Kiss and that's what it should be. Um, so yeah, Kiss, they don't suck. Yeah, maybe they don't try it, but you know, maybe Mark, if, when you're 73, you see if you (laughs) feel the same about you know, doing that kind of stuff uh, when you get to that age. I don't know. I, I mean, once you hit that up that age, you know, it's a lot of a lot of artists. You know, just turn in and and they're pretty much done and retire for sure. But well, that uh, but that but that comment there just plays into what those people are saying that they they should have stopped long time ago. Which play, plays into my comments that you don't know that you're over the hill until you're yeah. rolling down it. <laughs> You know, you it's like Julian said, you don't know that you stayed <laughs> so long until the next morning. You're like, oh, geez, I really started making an ass out of myself at a certain well, point. Well, OK, but, but Lonnie, let, let me ask you something. <laughs> do you honest? Do you honestly think that they haven't seen, you know, in places here and there, even years back, people saying, I don't know, this band should be wrapping it up by now. You, you, you think they're clearly not that uh, not that aware of that? Who, that Mark, who do you understand? Long? Do you understand that this is Kiss and they've never given a crap what anybody says about them? No, okay, no, I I know, but I'm saying that you're saying that they're they're unaware of that. I don't think they're unaware of it. I think they're aware that sure, they're, they're wrong or overdue. They're so, they have selective hearing. Now, being at a party, but no, they have selective hearing. <laughs> Julian's right; they have selective hearing too. But I mean, Kiss has never cared what the critics said or what. I mean, did they care? I mean, did they care back in the? I, I wasn't around, but even in the '70s, like when people were like, oh, you got to listen to Kiss. And there were people that hated Kiss. Like, I mean, Detroit Rock City talks about it. I knew Detroit Rock City is in a documentary, but it was it was incorporating that that was really going on. And I remember in the, in the 90s when I was a Kiss fan and people were like, oh, Kiss, they suck. I mean, how, I mean, they even put it on one of their albums. Oh, I still say they suck. You know, that was tongue in cheek. They they never cared what people have to say. About I, I, I'm not I'm not arguing with that. I'm just saying that to say that they're unaware of it. I think they're not. They drink that, the same you know? goddamn Kool Aid we do. Yeah, they the key indicator is is sales, and they're able to still, you know. Do you cre- do you, know, you think they want to close tickets. the store with the amount of merchandise? They sell on a nightly basis oh, no, no. on I, top I, I, of the guarantees they that they are still able to. So I, why why I'm not saying that? Okay, I'm so just, the the store the store down the road, it, the award winning restaurant, shall we say, 
is doing gangbuster business. They better close up before, you know, they get over the hill. I mean, how how the hell do you know, you know, when it's over, <laughs> when you've got such a captive audience throwing money? Look at Ken. Uh, these, these releases. Yeah, Ken. Every, yeah, all of these releases <laughs> that people are fighting over and paying insane amounts on the secondary market when they miss out on the exclusivity. They have a captive audience. They have people who were toddlers uh, in 2019 I, I who are now teenagers. I understand all that. What I'm saying is that, look, they could be they could be doing that when they were long retired. They could still release these records and people would buy them. Okay. They don't have and they to be will. out there touring. But what them. if the whole measure of the value of your life is in the transactions that you make? That you are getting a, a check? Mm-hmm. That you are signing a contract? That yeah. you are receiving adulation and validation yeah. on a nightly basis? How do you walk away from that even when you know you are no longer performing at the same level that you were? It's like athletes as well. How do you walk? How many athletes have stayed too long? Michael Schumacher, great example, came back, was nothing like he was in his prime, and then he comes back, and Muhammad mm -hmm. Ali. George Foreman, yeah, look, I, I Mike understand. Tyson. And, but, and, yeah, and, but, those, but then, oh, okay, but Tyson's a great example. Of, I, I, know, I'm, try, I'm trying to think of some hockey like references, but I got you nothing. Know? <laughs> you know, but that that's the thing. I mean, those people, though, did look foolish doing it, though. You know, there's no... Exactly. That, Humanity, you know? the whole essence of our human experience is that we're basically morons. We don't know when to quit. Well, and, and we're more very, very few <laughs> are going to hit the heights. No, we are. Win that Oscar can... and drop the mic. Very few you are going to walk away from it. OK, good. Look, let me put it to you this way. You, you, you were asking me about, you know, going to go see them. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm still, you know, pretty much convinced I'm going to go because I'm going to go with my friend to that box with them. Right now, if I had to dump, let's say, two hundred dollars or whatever for tickets to go see them. Would I do it? I don't know because to me, I don't think they're nearly as good a show. Would I do it for some other bands I've seen that are playing? And I'm not going to keep going over Metallica all the time, but they're a prime example of I would gladly drop the money for that, right? But you know, look, they we know it. The people out there know it. Kiss have long overstayed their welcome. We're the ones who are making them stay longer because, like you said, we're giving them all this money. We're we're attending their concerts and stuff like that. So of course they're not going to go away like that now but i mean if we were being truthful to ourselves we would clearly know that they that they're not the band that they were before you know and not and, and i know people are gonna jump all over me for saying that right but you know if if this is actually the end then then great then then let them go out on a high note now and do it and but if they're gonna if they pull another fast and i'll be really disappointed let's say this be... people are gonna miss them when they're gone yeah, obviously, sure. all those all those people in South America think Kiss suck this year. I mean, you but see the see sales like and the amount of crowds. Couple of years, like yeah, I mean, they went down there last year. Oh, down and there last year, there. yeah. And they were back um, there this year, and all the box scores for those events. And yeah, some of them are festivals, but that's good business. The people are now trying to say that that doesn't count because they were festivals. I'm sorry, how many people are coming to see Deep Purple in 2023, to be perfectly honest? How many people want to see Deep Purple in its current formation? If they were playing all of uh, Perfect Strangers, uh, I, I might be interested. But uh, Richie ain't in the band. Kiss has has done everything to really put off fans in the last 25 years. If you really think about it, putting out a reunion album that was bullshit, that was a, a complete lie. Um, dressing mm. up other people in original members' makeup, um, you know, going out with a, a boring ass stage show that absolutely is shameful in some cases. You know, 2006, 2007, just a freaking row of amps like 1974 again and some trust thrown on the, you know. Mm -hmm. they, ha they have basically done everything to put people off and they've continued to get the guarantees and be booked and tour no matter what they have done um, to diehard's tastes. Mm-hmm. 
And you know what? I say more power to them for getting away with it. Because at the end of the day, I've gotten to enjoy far more shows than I ever would if I'd stopped in 2000. And you know mm -hmm. what? I've had a lot of great experiences. I've hung out with a lot of awesome fans and enjoyed the experience. So does Kiss suck? Hell no, they don't. Not to me. Um, well, I think that's one of the things that are that's mainly that I, that I get from this is that I think a lot of the people are more, you know, happy with the, you know, joining up with the friends and meeting new people and that interaction seems very strong in this time period. You know, more ever than more so than ever before, probably. I mean, even Daniel well, mentions that. You know, I think so, but I, I think it, it, it's getting together and celebrating the band with your friends and family. Yeah. Yeah. And like, let's experience this together one more time. And, let, you know, think, think, and, and reminiscing of, remember when we saw him back in, in 04, and, you know, remember, remember, when, remember when they came back in 09 and how packed the place was that night? I didn't think, you know, there'd be that many people here. And remember when we saw him in 96, oh my gosh, we were lucky to get tickets that year. It's, it's more about reminiscing with your friends and family. And, and I think that's, these are the conversations that I'm going to have with my brother that night. Like, remember when we saw him in 96? My God, that was amazing. Remember, remember when we drove here and we did that? Remember when we did this? And, you know, let, let's experience this together, dude, one more time. And let's build one more memory together with our favorite band. That's why they don't suck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was just trying to yep. just quickly googling a, a fact for myself. It reminds me of James Mishner uh, wrote a book, Space, and mm. as part of the story there, um, one of the politicians gets elected to office and um, rolls out a, a World War II veteran, a hero, and every election cycle continues to do that as this guy gets progressively older and older and loses his marbles, basically. But people keep coming and voting for that guy and honoring that veteran, no matter how doddery he gets, because it's an important part of a shared history together. And, and that's really what Lonnie nails. You know, again, it's more than the sum of the parts at this point. And a lot of the people who say kiss suck have been saying it for 25 years. And now it's like they're shouting, True. they're still shouting at clouds because they're actually literally <laughs> old people. Um, you know, they are grandpa in the Simpsons. I still say they suck. Um, yes, we know you say that in every goddamn thread. Every time we start talking about kiss, you immediately come in about how they suck now. It, it doesn't matter what we're talking about. We're talking about the recording of Deuce. Oh, Kiss really sucks now. Um, <laughs> and just do what's right for you. Should we move on to another topic from the board? Sure. Or have we scared ourselves <laughs> off? <laughs> if you're still watching this episode or listening to us, we are, thank you. we are thankful for your patience while we work our way through some of the, the board topics. All right, Crazy Nights versus White Snake in 1987. Hmm. Which album is better? And for our international friends, that is <laughs> the album has two different names. One is 1987, and one is White Snake, White Snake. Um, yeah. So we are, of course, talking about Still of the Night. Well, the redo of Still of the Night, because that was, of course, done in '82. Yeah. Lonnie, White Snake, or Crazy Nights? I'm not a big White Snake guy. So for for me, it's an easy choice. It's, it's crazy nights. I mean, I I love the I this album. You know, say what you want about it, but I don't know. I'm, I've I, White Snake's never been my go to really for anything. Um, I ha, you know, I have White Snake albums, but it's just it's I and I have that album, but it's not. I'll, I'll listen to Crazy Nights ten times out of ten times, honestly. Okay, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Another setup. Here comes the oh god! Well, for me, it's no. There's no competition. It's it's definitely White Snake. I'm a John Sykes fan through and through, and I, I and you know how much I, I and I said this in the first episode I did with you guys when I first came in on that anniversary of Dress to Kill, that Bruce Kulick is my guy in Kiss, and he is still to this day my guy in Kiss. And as much as Bruce did a fantastic job on Crazy Nights, I think uh, John Sykes is just 
unstoppable in my opinion on that album just listen to the guitar solo and crying in the rain listen to the guitar solos and uh, and even just his rhythm guitar playing on that album i mean the, hey 12 million people can't be wrong i mean how much did crazy nights do not even a, not even one tenth of that right so i mean it's a million it, it, it's worldwide a, yeah okay so it's 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 a great album i think still to this day it's probably their biggest selling record and that doesn't mean that, that that's not the only point to make it great. Uh, I like I said, I love John Sykes. After he left and Slip of the Tongue came out, I, I was not near, nowhere near as big a fan. I mean, Steve Vai is a great guitar player, but he doesn't have doesn't have the same feel. He's not the same songwriter as John Sykes is. And I I, I listened I listened to White Snake. I've worn through two cassettes, three CDs of that album. Hmm. Probably okay, out of CD. <clears throat> Dang. Okay. Um, I left in the car and so it got screwed up. <laughs> <laughs> Melted. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, um, it's kind of difficult. Uh, they're both really good. Um, I mean, <laughs> Crazy Nights is not a real good Kiss album. It's a good album, but not a real good Kiss album. Um, White Snake is a real good white snake album um you know i almost want to say tight they're different in a way but uh i'm gonna i'm i'm gonna pick what i would probably listen to more would be crazy nights but i think i think it's kind of a wash for me um because i like i don't like every song on each album <laughs> you know kind of thing You're uh, such a true kiss fan ken You're yeah, so I, mean, I could have to... said no, I'm, I'm just gonna I'm gonna say it's like a tie for me, <laughs> really seriously. Uh, uh, though I like you know the slide it in better than that album, but that's, that's which slide story. it in, the European or the American? Yeah. Well, the American, the American, because that's what I because yeah, it's hair metal bullshit. Because right. he's an American. Yeah, I like that. USA, USA, USA. <laughs> All right. So anyway, uh, we'll just do a tie. For me. <laughs> You're, you're copping out, okay. Um, out. I'm going to go with Crazy Nights. Yeah, the White Snake album was really cool, and I enjoyed it. I liked the videos, and yeah, it was. it's very dated. It has not done well. It has not aged well. And I'd heard original versions of a couple of those songs, not Still the Night, freaking brain farting after one beer. Um, Crying in the Rain. Mm -hmm. was on Saints and Sinners, which yeah. is a spectacular album from the band's blues rock. Their real lessons. You know, Sonny was slided in, uh, getting fucked around with for the American market that they became more of a metal band than blues rock coming out of Deep Purple, which is very obvious. Um, you've got Here I Go Again, the original version on there as well. You know, once it becomes the hair metal histrionics, it, it was great at the time. You know, again, you couldn't get away from that. You couldn't get away from Cult Electric in 87. You couldn't get away from In Excess. You couldn't get away from Appetite for Destruction. All this shit. You couldn't get away from White Lion. Pride. Well, they, you, know, you know, the thing is, Julian, that David Coverdale was just sick of not making any money. You know, they're a great blues band, but they weren't making fuck all during that time. No, he wanted he, he wanted to make it in America. Big difference. Well, yeah, he was, but that, he was, and that's he what was, happened. He was doing well in Europe and South America. Uh, but again, like you said, that's not where the money is. And you, you've got to make the changes. And, of course, the musical landscape was shifting, even for old dogs like David Coverdale, mm -hmm. you know, in 83, 84. You know, there'd been shakeup in his band, and then obviously after that, a massive shakeup. So, slip of the tongue's bullshit. I don't. I listened to that album once, and yeah. I, I I quit White Snake after that. But I'm going with Crazy Night simply because it's a more honest album in the sense that it is very little recycling. It is catering and writing to a certain standard and i've come to appreciate the album a lot more than i did in 1987 now um and i i can enjoy bruce's guitar playing a hell of a lot more being able to separate it from some of paul's you know casual vocals so mm -hmm. yeah white snake wins the video war though definitely with tony fair enough <clears throat>
All right. That's as much of a cop out as Ken's answer. <laughs> Without saying both. All right. Um, let's go into another another topic from the board. The worst kiss song that you secretly love, Mark. Which uh, which destroyer song is it? <laughs> destroyer song. There could be possibly no destroyer song that I love. I mean, and a song that I that I the worst kiss song that you secretly love. I mean, weird ass question. Yeah, I mean, who, who, who's, all, de who's gotta, deciding which is worst? Yeah, and you got to you know figure out you know what do you think is actually a really bad kiss song, and then what do you love about it? You know what I mean? Like, I, I would look at I it? would look at it more like in the kiss general like, consensus. The kiss fans generally dislike you know, or like guilty pleasure kiss song. Yeah, like, like yeah, like it's poo -poo like a the song, but you actually like it a lot. Song, you know? you like it. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay, yeah. you know what? In in that sense, if you're gonna say a, 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 a you know a song that people roll their eyes at generally, and you know, I, I secretly probably did too, and I kind of like it now. I can say that that goes for I was made for loving you. When it came out, I I hated it. Mm. I I never liked that song. But as the years went by, and Dynasty's become like a top five record for me now, for sure. I, I love that record. It's grown on me quite a lot over the years, and I don't mind that song anymore. I don't know what's happened over the years, but it it doesn't bother me as much as it did before. I mean, that song was a total skip for me all the time before but now it's one of those songs now which i don't and, and you know what the funny thing is but some people say that you know yeah it, it became really good when they started doing it like on the july 3 period when they really beefed it up and stuff like that and and i and it's good that how they did it that way too but i still like it even if it's in, in its original form you know i i think even if it's an original form it is kind of my guilty pleasure song was that on the re-recordings disc yeah. Yeah, can't remember. All right, Ken. Yeah. What's the worst? And Ken's gonna say, Julian, there is no worst kiss song. They're all tied. Yeah, all right. tie. Yeah, which wh which which songs are gonna be a tie for you now? Uh, I'm just trying to think of a song that. You know, Read my body. Well, most people. Well, no, not that. <laughs> Can't nothing, even say. nothing, secretly, nothing can keep me from you. Nothing can keep me from you. Yeah. I finally found my yeah. way. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I, I'm just gonna say something like, I think a, a lot of people don't care for, um, they don't care for almost human. I think a lot of people don't like it for whatever reason, but I you know I, I think it's, I think it's fantastic. I just love. <laughs> Love the heck out of that song. Um, so that that's a song that you know, a lot of Kiss fans just just don't. Most of them don't seem to like it for whatever reason. Um, and maybe another one off of that album would be. Um, what's the other one? Well, love I'll just leave sale. it at that. Which one? Love for sale. Got love for sale. Got love for sale. Yeah, that might be another one. Actually, um, some people just can't stand that song and then you know some people love it but uh, i'll just stick with almost human ladies and gentlemen can pick gene songs <laughs> yeah is that america Hold on, Virginia. it's amazing wait a minute shocking yeah either team gene all the way yeah you've you got team gene down there you got team bob up in the other corner uh, let's go to lonnie <laughs> team lonnie um, i i I'm gonna say spit. I like. I mean, no. I know it's on Revenge, but I I do like spit, and I've talked about it on the show before that I like that. And I know a lot of people don't, and they go, "Oh, it's so Spinal Tap, and it's you know so, you know, horrible. fourteen year old, fourteen year old horrible." Thanks, Mark. You know, you <laughs> copped out. You picked a hit. You picked a top ten song. You picked a song that was a, a gold record. Yeah. Come on. Oh, that's my. It's terrible record. song. Though. This Come top on. ten hit. That's my guilty pleasure song. <laughs> um, Tiger, you give Ken a hard time. Jesus. Um, <laughs> you know, I know. I know a lot of people don't like spit, and that they you know it's it's stupid. It's it's it's. It's fourteen year old, just but I I love it because I was fourteen years old when the album came out, so I, I think it's I exactly. like it. You know, it, it you know it 
you know, it's like it's I guess it's the same reasons why I like Take It Off and, and, and other songs of that nature on that record and why I love that record, you know, to the extent that I do. So I think I think that that's my pick. It's it's, it's, it's a good pick. pick. You're welcome. You're welcome, Ken. I picked a Jean song. Headline yeah, news. Good. Lonnie picked a pick. revenge song. <laughs> yeah. yeah as well <laughs> you, you, you guys are really reaching into well, you know personal really digging, deep, really digging deep here <laughs> yeah okay so i'm gonna go with let's put the x i'm God. sorry oh. it is fucking it is so <laughs> cat it is sickeningly catchy as hell as whenever i do hear it yes i always see that eight-year-old girl get up on stage but i do start freaking bobbing my head to that damn thing <laughs> and i did listen to it so much uh you know Keyboard. that winter or whatever it was in uh, november 88 in singapore yeah it was on continuously and i can't help but smile when i hear it and think of happy memories that predate the kiss convention tour which ruined it forever for me so yeah and i i don't think anyone's gonna say that let's put the x in sex is high up on the list of kiss's best songs ever um mm. i have no idea where that would that would fall actually so that'd be interesting all right well i'm glad you left that for me by the way <laughs> all right let, let, let's let's go to all right, so we talked a little bit about Kiss in 2023. So we often do this. We ponder and pontificate about changes that we would make in order to make the band great again. So what song would you replace in the current set list, Ken? And what would you put in its place? <laughs> take out a Paul I'm not going to come out. Song. I'm not going to put in. I know you're. Thinking he would take it. out a Paul song and put in almost human. <laughs> yeah, almost human. No, we talked to actually. I was going to put in a Paul song that he didn't write because uh, I you're think he said this last week. <laughs> um, making love, I would pull. No. Yes, I pull that out. No, and... it's, they made a change, and you wanna you wanna change the well, change. Well, I'm gonna change the change. Ooh. I'm changing it to uh, King of the Nighttime World. I'm gonna replace it with that. That's my change. I want to do that one instead. Um, then I'd want to rearrange the set list a little bit and put that after Detroit Rock City. But uh, that's another thing. Uh, but yeah, that's what I do. I mean, without saying a Gene song, yeah, I'd love to put another Gene song in the set list. I mean, yeah, almost <laughs> no, no. But uh, any any Gene song would be great. I wouldn't mind to hear some other Gene song from like. Uh, why don't they just do "Not for the Innocent"? What the hell? Let's throw that in there. Um, I would love to hear that in there. But they, of course, that's never going to happen. But King of the Nighttime World has more of a chance to go into the set list than you know some of these other songs. Yeah, did you see on the board how someone mentioned that uh, they saw a set list uh, of one of the VIP experiences, and it now has a line, sit, for Gene to oh, yeah, sit. take a little break. So take a break. We, we should put spit in the set list so that he misreads it and goes off stage to sit down. Start singing the spit. <laughs> All right. Um, Lonnie? I would take out Say Yeah. And I know that's an easy answer, but I would take out Say Yeah. And I wish they were doing this. I wish they would do God Gave Rock and Roll to You in the encore right before Rock and Roll All Night, like they did on the Rock the Nation tour. I think for these last few shows, I think it'd be very fitting um, to end the show with, with those two songs in a row. I Again, Lonnie picks the Revenge song, but... Big surprise. I, but <laughs> you get what you sign up for with this show. And I would take, I'd put, I gotta give Rock and Roll to you was such a big hit for him. And we talked about it on the show last week. Um, Dan, Daniel brought that, that song up. We were talking about something I forget. But um, I think it'd be, su it'd be such a good fit for the end of the show and for these last few shows that end the show like that. I wish they, I really wish they were doing that. Oh well, wait a minute! They do play that at the end of the show after the show's over. Count, Ken. Hey, hey, it's it's on tape too. 
if you could sing along to that. What's the, what's the difference? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Right. It's backing track there for him, ready? Let's sing to it, come on. <laughs> okay, Mark, your turn. Okay, so it's funny. I mean, I was thinking about the same song as Lonnie, like Say Yeah seems like an obvious pick to take out of there. But, you know, there's one thing about this tour that I was a little surprised about that they didn't do. And again, I'm going to refer to the greatest band ever to walk this planet, Rush. Uh, and what they did on their tour is they referenced songs from each of their albums on their last tour, right? So they, they played something from each album, right? And I really thought that would have been a great idea for Kiss to do, you know? But of course, you know, these kind of good ideas go with Kiss. So I, I think that a good idea would be, and, and I, I don't know how many people will argue this. I don't. I can't imagine people argue this because I know a lot of people are sick of this. I've heard even you guys say that you're sick of this song. I would pull Lick It Up with that Won't Get Fooled Again crap. Oh, yeah. I'm so tired of that. They've been doing that same version of the song now for God knows how long. And you know what? Take it out and put in something else from another rat record. And I know it's not going to be a favorable pick, but why not put in Hell or Hallelujah? Represent something from Monster for crying out loud. Put that in there, you know? I mean, it's the, the single off the album, probably the only song you can put, pick on from that album without people walking to go get a beer, you know, during that song. But, uh, you know, I, I would have hoped that they would have stretched their set list a little bit to include some more songs from different albums from the period. I mean, you're celebrating your final tour, pull in some of the other songs from some other records that are not represented. Yeah, it's it's really tough when you think about how constrained the set is at this point. You know, that you've got the, the, the little guitar battle thing um, going on to, again, provide a pause. That, that's the only purpose that it serves in my mind because it certainly it doesn't have any artistic merits. Um, what, what 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 would I pull out of the set today? I mean, I'm looking at the set and looking at it how they look at it, that it provides the most obvious songs to be celebrating their catalog with within that time limit. Um, it It's so tough to, I would say, get the fucking rid of Psycho Circus. Oh, wow. <clears throat> Get that out of there, you know. Don't have it sharing half of that song with half of um, Hundred Thousand Years. They were never symbiotic. They should never be kind of melded together in that manner. What do I put in its place? Hide your heart. Yeah, yeah, see, that's from another album that's, that's not represented, you know? It was there for me in Vancouver at the beginning of the tour, so it's already featured, but it does tell that story um, for the later part of the 1980s, since I don't want to hear Crazy Nights, and that would be the one that would come the other option from the late 80s. Tears Are Falling was in the shows that we saw in early 2000. You know, so that that era is missing. They're not going to take out Heavens on Fire. Um, they're, miss, they're missing a big hit with uh, Forever. I mean, why not put that one in there? I, I think that's just a, a step too far vocally in, in terms of well. it, it's no. <laughs> okay. Fra yeah. No, it's okay, it's phrasing point. and hide your hide your heart with was a great song because it had so yeah. much MTV airplay whether you saw yeah. Ace's version Bonnie Tyler's version <laughs> uh, Molly Hatchet's uh, version Molly Hatchet uh, you know so this goes on you know, I, I, I don't see the need to re try and replace it with a deep cut either I love the idea of God gave rock and roll to you even if it's from Revenge because it is such a great song in that position for the role that it serves as well. So that would also that would also be a possible one. But get rid of Psycho Circus because that just, you know, maybe a lot of those fans aren't even going to the shows because they are the ones who walked away in 2000. I, I don't need to hear it or, or remember everything about that. Uh, do we have any last topics on here? Did anyone come up with any last one that they wanted to talk about? I've got one thing. Mm -hmm. And that is uh, Adam Baum on stage with Tommy Thayer's guitar. He was at a, a VIP um, appearance on stage 
he's from, I, I think, the same part of the world that Tommy came from. He, of course, mm -hmm. auditioned for Kiss in 1982, did not get it. Uh, he had a solo band signed to Geffen in 85 with Jimmy Crespo, uh, ex-Aerosmith, mm -hmm. in the lineup. So he gets up on stage, Tommy hands him uh, the guitar, and he shreds firehouse and tommy starts okay give me back the guitar and he's just like, <laughs> <laughs> doing his thing there was a big debate about whether he, you know it was acceptable or not i was like you know it, it's it's a paid event there are vip people there it's not really the the right place for that to be happening but obviously he was really getting off as someone who rehearsed with the band um or at least audition i, I don't know how far right. that one went it's one of those kind of legendary things all the people who did but he most certainly did in 1982 so it was very nice to him for him to get that sort of closure londy did you get to see that video and what are your thoughts on on that event and if you want to punt it quickly because you haven't caught up yet just say I, I'm gonna to mark. Have to I, I, I can't comment on that <laughs> mark did you see it uh no, I didn't. But actually, the funny thing is, <laughs> no. But the thing is, right now I, I have it here on on my phone, so it's it's interesting that. Uh... I mean, look at his face when he gets that guitar on as well. I mean, it really is. It's cool. It makes. Uh, oh, of course. Charge your freaking battery before the show, Mark. <laughs> I didn't see the I didn't see the video oh, there you go. until Mark just showed it. Believe well, it or not. that was quick. No, I do recommend it if you haven't seen it, and you know that that's a perfect reason to point it. it out. You can find it on the FAQ. It's all over the place. It's on YouTube. Adam Baum on stage playing Firehouse in Prague. Um, very very cool little thing because not a lot of people get up on stage and get to actually plug in very rare occurrence right. and I mean for him just to be able to Do, do check it out, you know, kudos to Tommy for, uh, you know, I don't know if that got him in trouble with the so, bosses, but it was very I, cool. I'm curious, Adam Baum, why does that name sound familiar, though? Like, it, am I, I'm i not, I, I keep, whenever I hear that name, I keep thinking the wrestler, that's a different guy, though, right? That that was involved with WCW, with the demon thing. Asking the wrong guy here. Don't know fuck okay. all about that, other than Rowdy Roddy Piper. <laughs> okay. And Jimmy Superfly Snooker. The Crusher. Yeah, that's going right back. Beefcake Bar. I, I mean, if it was Bruce Bruce the Barber. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and, and Ric Flair. You know, I do remember all that shit, but uh, <laughs> wrestling wasn't big in England for me. So, All right. That's a whole bunch of topics from the board. What's the next week going to bring us? They're continuing on the road um, through mid July. There are some pretty good ticket deals, especially in Britain. Um, you know, mm. so these are your opportunities. You know, there, there's a lot of criticism on the board, but a lot of the people doing the criticizing don't go to the shows. And they are fans as well who have every right to voice their opinion. It just gets a bit tiresome when it has to be repeated in every single thread. That's what makes me upset, not the opinions themselves. <laughs> it's that I've been reading the same opinions for in some cases decades so doesn't matter do what's right for you enjoy the fucking music i've been listening to a lot of mtv unplugged stuff doing mm. writing a, a little article i'm enjoying the living shit out of that era at the moment mm. just really fun to to hear you know the band back when they were doing things that were different we talk about it each week on the show things that we would have them do different it's nice to go back and you know just root myself in all those recordings from the tour where they were doing things different they were doing it dreadfully sometimes when they would try <laughs> songs you know off the cuff mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it, it's still fun now to listen back to that um new bootleg someone 
actually posted this on, on the board, Tulsa 75. Yeah, it comes from the freaking reel I did a transfer of. Um, it's not an upgrade. It's been out there for years, but go listen to it again. It's a live era, or Dress to Kill tour. Great stuff. Just to, you know, if Kiss doesn't make you happy now, go find a video from an era when they did and relive it. And maybe mm -hmm. remind yourself while you're still on a message board or on Facebook <laughs> connecting with fellow fans, you know, about a band. So that's it. That's the lecture. No homework. We don't do that here. Mm -hmm. um, and hopefully next week I'll have a KISS um, FAQ auction ready. Ooh. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Probably 10 items. Just keep it easy since uh, I want to see how it goes before I, I do more. Maybe some big ticket items. So for now from Lonnie. Mark, Ken, and myself, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for spending time listening to the KISS FAQ podcast today. All sales are final, there are no refunds. If you'd like, look us up on Facebook or come over to the KISS FAQ message board and discuss the topic we've broadcast today. Don't forget to rate us on iTunes, Spreaker, or wherever you've listened to the show. We hope you'll join us again.